everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and I'm very glad that you're joining me today. Today I am wearing this sweatshirt again, please forgive me. I'm actually filming a lot of videos in this time frame and I would normally change my outfit but it's cold in my house and I just got this sweatshirt so I love it. So this is like video number three that I'm filming in it. <laughs> But anyway, today is a really, really fun adventure because we are starting to build my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. Now, this is something that is like massively popular. It's been very, very popular in the plant community long before I got this. So this is number one, a really, really good thing because I have so much wisdom to draw upon. Like literally so many people have done this. So I can just like watch all of their videos, uh, read all their posts and just like learn more about how they specifically did this. And number two, with that being said, I will link everything that I'm referring to down in the description box below so that you guys can see uh, multiple videos of people building their greenhouse cabinets and just yeah, learning more about the whole process. But yeah, so if you are wanting to build one of these greenhouse cabinets, you should really, really be checking IKEA very often because currently IKEA is having a lot of stuff out of stock. Like basically nothing that I would want to buy from IKEA is in stock right now, which really sucks because I need to like get things moving with my house. But finally, this specific cabinet, the, um, what is it called? I'm blanking on the name, Millsbo. The Millsbo is a, well, there's two versions of it. So I got the tall one, but there's also a little shorter one, which I kind of wish that I got that one, but I'm actually glad that I got the tall one. Like both would have been really cool, but I did get the taller one. So those are the two options for the Millsbo cabinets, but there is another one. I'll put it on the screen with the name. It starts with an R. That is one that I've also seen people use and that is in stock more often than the Millsbo from my understanding because it's not like the iconic ikea piece so uh, for this exact project so with that being said it came in stock randomly one day at st louis ikea i wanted the white one because as you can see my cabinets are white and i wanted it all to be like cohesive in this room because i'm going to be putting it right here in this spot which i realized after the fact i don't have a plug-in right there which like would be really nice but i really really want to put it there so i'm gonna try to like work out some sort of extension cord situation to go into the laundry room which is right here hopefully i'm able to do this i don't have a place other than right there to do this and i feel a little silly that i didn't think about this before but you definitely need like a place to plug things in because you could have you know a fan a humidifier and definitely lights in there at any given time so you definitely need this to be connected to some sort of electricity so before you place the cabinet make sure that you have a solution for that but i'm just gonna buy an extension cord and see what happens and that's where i'm gonna put it for now maybe in the future i'll move it but that's my plan as of right now because i want to keep my sensitive plants in there and well not the sensitive plant but my uh, needy plants in the cabinet and i'm always in the kitchen so i thought it'd be perfect to put it there all the talking aside i have to assemble it now so i'm going to time lapse and you can enjoy the little greenhouse assembly okay i just opened up the first box because it does come in two boxes and these are extremely heavy if i never have to carry these boxes again <laughs> i will be very happy it's time that i have to assemble furniture by myself it can very easily get overwhelming and confusing and especially when it's ikea i haven't put together ikea furniture since college and i remember it was always a really horrible experience <laughs> so we're just gonna hope that this goes okay but every time i have to assemble furniture by myself i just take it one step at a time i get out the picture book and i study this like it is my textbook for an exam so i'm just going to do that and hope for the best. Also something that I do during these processes is watch some freaking YouTube and I get caught up. I'm currently watching XO McKenna. I always watch her videos, I love them. So I'm catching up with her while I do this.
take a brief break from assembling this IKEA cabinet to talk about today's sponsor, which is Green Chef. Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company where you can order perfectly portioned and mostly prepped meals to cook at home. They have dishes for a variety of lifestyles, including vegan, vegetarian, paleo, and keto. One of the most daunting parts of my entire week is trying to figure out what the heck we're gonna eat all week. And anytime I get a Green Chef box, it's like someone else is doing the meal planning, the grocery shopping, and most of the prep work for me. And I especially love knowing that the meals are high quality and sustainably sourced. So if you're interested in checking out Green Chef for yourself, you can go to greenchef.us slash 90 daily plants and use code 90 daily plants to get $90 off, including free shipping on your first box. This is easily one of the most intricate salads I have ever made in my life, but I've never really made a, sa a salad at home with romaine lettuce before. Like there's so many things in here that I would never think to combine or just like make for myself. So I just I hope I didn't drop that, but I don't know. I just love Green Chef because it opens me up to so many different types of recipes. Just like so many things I would never ever think to cook. So thank you, Green Chef. Mmm. <laughs> Wait, that is so good. Mmm. A goodbye boring salads. Like this is so delicious. Highly recommend this one. All right, hello. Welcome to day two of building this cabinet. I left off with the four framing pieces on and I need to add on this back framing piece um, and then I'm going to insert something else to go on the base here. Let me move the camera down. I don't know exactly what is supposed to go down here because there's two more plates left and I'm a little confused. So we're just gonna do this and then we're gonna roll with it. Oh, my instructions. Hold on, I need my instructions. I actually just had to look back at footage to figure out where I put this. <laughs> I don't know why, I had no idea where I put it. I, I always do that where I put things where I'm like, oh, I'm gonna remember, and then I never do, so. All right, we're all good. All right, the cabinet is finished. It looks really, whoop, it looks really good right there. I really, I really do like it. I love it, it is so pretty. It was actually very easy to assemble. A few moments I was confused, but for the most part that was really easy. So now I just have to plan out, now I just have to plan out how I want to like turn it into a greenhouse. I'm gonna do some research, but I know that I'm gonna need to get some weather stripping stuff and probably drill a hole at the bottom so that I can, you know, feed a cord up there. But yeah, really good stuff, I love it. We are now at my old greenhouse here and we are going to basically take everything that I had set up in here and transfer it out there because that would just be the easiest thing. Um, basically, I have a bit of a leg up when it comes to this because I've already had some sort of greenhouse set up so I have the lights and I have like the heat mats and just stuff like that. So I'm a little bit more prepared than maybe someone starting completely from scratch. So um, yeah, I'm really happy about that. But there is still a lot of stuff that I need to buy. For some reason, I didn't think about getting like the pegboard or anything from Ikea because Ikea actually sells a pegboard that everybody uses in their Ikea greenhouse to like hang more stuff, which no clue why I didn't even think of that, but we're just gonna go with it and see maybe if I wanna get a different pegboard or just use something else or just not have a pegboard. We'll see, I don't know. I've noticed that there's two, two types of greenhouse cabinets that I typically see people have. The first type is it's very functional and like literally it's a, it's a greenhouse. So you have like a bunch of stuff in there 
and you're using it for propagating and all that kind of stuff. And then there's other people who use it more as like a display and also a convenient place to put humidity loving plants. And I'm going towards the latter. Like I don't want it to be overstuffed and like looking really cluttered and crazy. So I'm probably gonna put a lot of my anthurium in there and like maybe a few other random things. But for the most part, it's gonna be mostly anthurium um, and like humidity lovers because yeah, I'm still not exactly sure what my humidity situation is gonna be like in the house, but I do know that we don't want it to go above 60% in the house. The, the sunroom is different. That can go a lot higher if we want, but in general, we don't want it to be like wet in our house because mold is a thing. And especially having an earth contact home is probably gonna be a lot more moisturized in here than other places. So yeah, all that being said, we're gonna move these and uh, yeah, it'll be good. Let's go with our mess of grow lights to the greenhouse. And by the way, I haven't screwed the hole in it, in the, the cabinet yet. So I'm probably just gonna feed the lights out as of right now. I'm gonna ask for Daniel's help because I think that I need like a special drill bit for that, which I think that we have, but I don't know if our drill that we currently have is compatible with it. Okay, so when I bought these lights, they came with these little adhesive stickers and they work okay. Like it's not the best, but they do work. So we'll see how long it lasts, like on the greenhouse thing. But I feel like the lights do get very hot so it warms it up and I don't know if that like melts the glue, but basically these lights get very hot. And I had these in my other greenhouse in there obviously, you saw, and it would get like 90 degrees in there. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use these in here. We will have to see because I definitely don't want it to be that hot in there. That's a little bit too warm for like the plants that I'm putting in, in my opinion, I think that's too warm. But they're so powerful that I think I'm only gonna need one light per section. So hopefully it won't get too hot in there, but I want it to be lit adequately, but I don't want it to be like freaking inferno. <laughs> okay, I put the first grow light up there second one right here and I realized that I obviously ran into a hole because I don't have a little hole <laughs> for the cords to go through and feed down so what I'm gonna do is um, talk to Daniel see if my drill bit will, will work and see what I can do after that all right so I just got back from the store and I picked up two packs of this weather stripping. I don't know how much I'm actually going to need, but I figured it would be better to get too much rather than not enough because I don't want to have to go back to the store. I also got an extension cord and I got a chuck for our uh, drill so that we can use it um, instead of using a little one because the little one wasn't really working. The cabinet is pretty much finished, honestly. We drilled the hole. Well, Daniel drilled the hole. I supervised and provided supplies. And then I covered the little, the edges with my weather tape because it was really sharp. I mean, I filed it down, but it was still sharp. So I put that there on both of the sides because I think that something that I didn't know was that there's two layers here. Obviously I assembled it so I knew that there were two layers, but like when it came to drilling, I kind of forgot about the second layer. So yeah, that has been put on there and now I just need to do the weather stripping along the sides, especially along the doors, and then probably like up here if needed. But yeah, the lights are all hooked up and it looks really nice. I'm going to like put tape or something along so that the cords aren't just flying around. Like this doesn't look amazing, but yeah, that's pretty much the situation as of right now. All right, I wanted to test this out before I actually like showed you how to do this, but this is the weather tape that I got, just really simple, something that I found at the hardware store. And I'm taping it along the edge right here so that when the door swings open, it will be in this little area. And then when it closes, it is completely sealed off. And because this kind of like is a little foamy, it doesn't keep the door from closing all the way. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. And I removed the door to do it. 
The doors are really easy to remove from these. If you've assembled it, you know. It is a new day with the greenhouse cabinet and I had I had it set up for a few days, like probably I set it up like three days ago and I kind of wanted to sit with it and see what I thought of it. I don't know, long term, I guess in the short term, kind of. I don't know, I wanted to just like live with it for a bit and then make more adjustments when necessary. And I was just working outside, so I came back inside and I wanted like a little bit of a break and I'm probably gonna have lunch in a second, but in any case. <laughs> so this is how it has turned out. I put some of my, well, I, I put the plants in here that are likely going to live in here full time. There's a few that I'll probably remove um, just because they don't really need to be in here and I'm probably going to reconfigure things quite a bit so that I can fit more plants. I didn't really think that I wanted to do the pegboard thing on the back because usually people will put a pegboard back here so that they can like put clips or shelves and things like that for their plants. And for a while, I didn't think that I wanted to do that because I wanted this to look more like a china cabinet that happened to have plants in it. But I think functionality wise, it would be better if I did that and just, yeah. And it doesn't look bad when people do it. I don't know why I just like didn't really want to. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. I don't know if that'll go in this video because I wanna post this soon because I've been teasing about this a lot on Instagram. So the humidity in here has actually kept pretty well, but there's still more spaces that I need to seal up. And um, because it, it, it sits like at like 60% humidity normally, but I just opened the doors and it switched to 46, like pretty quickly, it dropped really fast. And so I, I really need to do a little bit more weatherproofing on the top right here and also on the bottom, but it's a little bit hard to do the weatherproofing up here because um, the door needs to shut. So it can't be that thick. So I did get the skinnier weatherproofing, like I said, and so that does really well on the door here. I just have to kind of open both doors and shut them at the same time. I know that a lot of people will get the weatherproofing that has the flap on it. And that is like really great and stuff, but I was so confused on how to use it. So I'd never bought it. But then after watching a bunch of videos, I saw how people were using it and I was like, oh, okay, I guess all well, that makes sense. But anyway, this is just how I decided to do it. So now I'm gonna weatherproof the top. And then I'm gonna put another little strip on the side, like on the very top corners, cause I didn't put it up there. This cabinet now, all of these plants, I think is pretty much where my fungus gnat problem was coming from. And then now that they're all in here, there's like so many fungus gnats on that trap, like even more than before. So it's pretty grody. All right, so I have my extra small weatherproofing seal. It looks like this. Oh wait, that's the back. It looks like this. And it actually has like two sections. So I could even like split this to make it even skinnier than this, but I like the thickness here. So I'm going to put it across the top and see if that affects anything. There's two little magnets on the doors that clip in right here and hold the cabinet on. So as long as that little section is opened up, it closes. So I'm gonna see if that weatherproofing helps at all to see if perhaps I could avoid having to do it to the bottom because I think the bottom is sealed pretty well. So we'll see if that makes a difference. And if that didn't do the trick, then I'm just gonna put like a little, oh my God. If that didn't do the trick, I'm just gonna put like a tiny humidifier in there or I saw someone in their video, I think it was Plantarier Design, I think that's their YouTube channel, I don't know. I'm linking a bunch of people's videos down below. But in their video, they have a little fountain inside of their greenhouse cabinet, which looks so cute. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do, maybe. But anyway, that is the cabinet. I really don't have much else to say right now. Again, I am going to be getting a pegboard with all the little accessories, but that will take a little bit of time to order and get in because Ikea is not Amazon. <laughs> and a lot of their accessories are actually not for sale online, but the actual pegboard itself and some clips are for sale online for shipping. So I'm gonna do that and um, see what I can gather up as far as, those are my dogs. But I'm gonna do that and see what I can gather up as far as materials go. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you are interested in checking out Green Chef, don't forget to click the link in the description box below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.